Beginning to step into deep. Stepping into launching into the deep in the realm of the spirit. I want us to pray quickly. Father, we give you praise and glory for all that you've done so far. I am excited today because you have something very deep to take us into today. And I connect with the spirit of grace for the release of the supernatural even to your people this moment. As I minister today, O oh God, by your spirit, please focus on every human heart. Lord, let everyone listening to the sound of my voice be launched into the deep tonight. Show us who you are. Do wonders and miracles, O oh God, as we declare and as we pray and as we pay attention to your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, brethren, I want to welcome you to a new perspective, a new dimension in the realm of the Spirit. You are entering into a new dimension in the realm of the Spirit, a new dimension into the spiritual power. We want to look into the dimensions of spiritual power. And that's my title, my title today, the dimensions of spiritual power. And I am focusing on the power in the name. The power in the name. The power in the name. Names are very, very vital. Names are so important to everything and to every human life. Names are very, very symbolic and names are significant. Your name is your identity. Whatever name they call you is a placard over your life, about your destiny. Names are very central to what destinies everyone will manifest. And I want to have a foundation scripture that is quite exciting. Now that we have entered into uh, the dynamics of spiritual power, entering into dimensions in the realm of the spirit, I, I will have to teach a little bit for clarity and for understanding. We will have a bit of prayer later on, but prayers with precision, prayers with understanding, prayers but in the power. So we are going to have to look at few scriptures that can help us and I would like to break down a little bit for clarity and for understanding purposes and then we can get into praying. But I know there are testimonies already in your life. I, I am so just so glad about what God did yesterday when he gave us four very outstanding, five very outstanding unique blessings. He pronounced grace upon our lives. He pronounced mercy upon us. He brought us into peace with God and with men. He brought us into power and he brought us into uh, favor. And that's a launching into a different level altogether. I want to start this evening by reading the book of Acts chapter 3. And this message this evening, I want to let you know this was provoked by my little daughter and in the morning while we were sharing I just, I have been the one just uh, bringing the word to her, bringing the word but today I felt led to say, young lady can you minister to me? Uh, speak to us, what is God saying to you? And she told me she read the book of Acts chapter 3 and chapter 4 and she began to minister, she, she, she's just a young lady of 10 years of age and she began to minister and God opened my eyes and gave me a dimension in the realm of the spirit that he actually wanted me to minister on tonight. So thank God for her life. Now, if you get to chapter 3 of Acts of Apostles, we read from verse 1. It says, Now Peter and John went up together into the, into the temple at the hour of prayer. Thank God the hour of prayer such as we have now. It said, Being the ninth hour, and a certain man, lamed from the mother's womb, was carried, whom they lay daily at the gates of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask for alms of them that entered into the temple. 
who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an arm. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I repeat the last verse. Said, then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And tonight, I want to try to expound on that scripture that there are wonders and amazement in the name of Jesus Christ. Wonders and amazement in the name of Jesus Christ. Peter says, such as I have, give I thee. I do not have silver. We do not have gold here. But we do have something. And that something is everything. The name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and work. And as he pronounced, he took hold of him. And the man leaped and walked and followed them to the temple. Praising God, leaping, walking, and praising God. Leaping, walking, and praising God. This was a man crippled from birth, who has been at the same gate all the days of his life. He leaped, he worked, and he praised God. Possibly for the very first time, he was able to enter the temple. Oh, glory to God. That was made possible only through the name of Jesus Christ. Peter was bold. Peter was confident. Peter had assurance in the name of Jesus. Peter had conviction in the name of Jesus. Peter was audacious to use the name of Jesus. Peter was so convinced that releasing the name of Jesus was going to generate wonders, was going to produce a miracle. Peter was not scared. Peter took the advantage of the moment. Peter was conscious of the power in the name of Jesus. Peter knew the name of Jesus was not a mere name. Peter knew the Savior within the name of Jesus. Peter understood the power, the authority that the name of Jesus carries. And so he was not going to give way. He was not going to let the occasion pass. He took advantage of the moment and he released his faith. In the name of Jesus publicly, he was not ashamed of the name of Jesus. He was not worried whether the name was going to disappoint him. But he took the name of Jesus, which has been given to all believers. He took the name of Jesus and he utilized with the courage and the boldness from him. He lifted the man up and the name responded. Hallelujah. The authority and the power in the name of Jesus responded. Glory. And the man leaped, the man walked, and the man praised God. And a wonder was done, right in the very before. Everyone in the temple. Jesus was honored. He was glorified. Hallelujah. Names are very important. Names are prophetic. Prophetic statement laid upon every individual. Just like I said before, your name is your identity. Your name identifies you physically and in the realm of the spirit. Your destiny in a nutshell is in your name. Or your name in a nutshell, is your destiny. When we look at the book of Matthew, chapter 1, 
the book of Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, the Bible talks prophetically about the child that was to be born. And talking about Mary the mother, it said, she will give, an angel was talking to Mary now, it said, she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. So the name Jesus, from the beginning, in the realm of the Spirit, in the word of the Spirit, is known for salvation. Jesus, salvation. Jesus, Savior. Jesus, deliverer. Jesus, that's what it means. So programmed from the heavenlies, the name of Jesus was not something they stumbled at. It was a prophetic name. It was a name with a mission. It was a name that God himself orchestrated. It was a name that was certified okay in the heavens. God the Father took that name, anointed that name, chose that name, and placed that name on the child that was yet to be born. It was God himself that named Jesus. And before he was even conceived, he already produced the evidence and sent an angel to tell the mother, that son you are going to give birth to must be called Jesus. Because it means he will save his people from all their sins. Hallelujah. That it's not news. It's not even when Jesus died. It was not new that the name Jesus produces salvation. It's not news in the spirit world, in the word of the spirit. The name Jesus is authentic, is known, both to the good and the evil. The name of Jesus is understood by demons as the authority above which there is none. The name Jesus has been established beyond and over all the seas. The powers in the air knows. The powers on the land knows. The powers under the ground knows. In the heavenly places, the name Jesus is recognized as a savior and as a deliverer. So prophetically, even before Jesus was conceived, the name was already waiting. And the angel brought the name even before conception. It was a divine name. It is still a divine name. In Joel chapter 2 verse 32, even before Jesus was born, Joel chapter 2 verse 32, and, God, and the, the, the word says, Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. And we saw after Jesus came and died and rose again and went back to heaven, Paul spoke about him in Revelation. He said in Philippians chapter 2 verse, verses 9 to 10, And he was given a name that is above every name, that at the mention of the name of Jesus every name should bow, every name should bow, every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He humbled himself to death in obedience to God. And therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above, supreme, superior, higher than every other name. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, every name should bow. Of the things in heaven, of the things on earth, of the things underneath the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. What a supreme name. What an authoritative name. Talking about the authority and the power in the name of Jesus. By authority we mean the rightness of the name of Jesus. The rightness. The license in the name of Jesus. The correctness of the name of Jesus. The name Jesus, like we read, was licensed by the Father himself. So it comes with the authority, the legality, the, 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 the legality
to do things to be the supreme name is the legal name in the realm of the spirit and the spirit world the name Jesus is the supreme supreme of all other names and talking about the power within the name meaning the capability and the, the ability within the name that's the name that prevails over every other name is the last authority the biggest and the, 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 the highest authority and the highest power in the name of Jesus there is dunamis power immeasurable power and to us in the natural we do not know much about this but in the word of the spirit the name Jesus carries such a sophisticated power it is an authority to behold it does not lack either the authority nor the power it combines the two together both the authority and the power of creation to that name everything answers to that name every name bows to that name in the realm of the spirit there is submission to that name in the physical there is submission demons cringe when that name is mentioned under faith from the position of knowledge in the water world that is the name that causes them to get an atrocute such a powerful name the name of Jesus it is the name that when you call in faith it produces wonders is the name that when you call with confidence you see miracles signs and wonders is the name that when you have courage to call in challenges and in situations you find answers you see divine intervention is the name that answer that power answers to all power answers to that name is the name by which we are saved is the name through which deliverances are wrought is the name by which we are healed is the name that produces holiness 24 7. a holy name of jesus matchless name of jesus the authority in the name of jesus all authority is in the name of jesus grace every kind of grace all forms of grace is in the name of jesus when you call it with courage it releases grace to you the, the name that generates peace to the believers but that torments those who are in the demonic world the name is both for peace to those who love Jesus and it is a torment, torture and a punishment unto those who are in the negative world it's the only name by which you can exercise punishment upon the unclean spirit Demons and unclean spirit have no respect for your grammar. But they do bow to the authority and the power in the name of Jesus. They tremble at the name of Jesus. This name is a pun punishment and it is a commotion in the kingdom of darkness. This name produces joy in the heart of the child of God. It produces order in the realm of the spirit. It generates rest to those who hope in him. This name is the access point, is the key into the spirit world, is the divine key into the realm of the spirit, into the world of the spirit. It is an access to the world of the spirit. This name is the order, is the one that authorizes blessings. In his name, there is victory. He produces victory 24-7. This name, by it, we have restoration in every form. The wonderful name of Jesus. When you look at Colossians chapter 2, verse 10, Colossians chapter 2, verse 10, and I want you to pay attention to this because this is significant. And if you dare to believe what I'm just about to read to you, your life will take a new turn from this day forward. 
you will change your levels from this day forward. In the realm, in the spirit world, your position will change permanently. And Colossians chapter 2 verse 10 says, And you are complete in him, who is the head of all principalities and powers. <laughs> you and I, who believes in Jesus, we are complete in him, who is the head of all principalities and powers. You are complete in him. You are complete in him. His name is your umbrella. His name is your sanctification. His name is your peace. His name carries the authority and the power that he possesses. And it becomes yours because you are his and he is your portion. Hallelujah. You are complete in him who is the head of all principalities and powers. How dare you begin to threaten somebody that is the head of all principalities and powers? Who are those foul spirits that can torment and taunt your life? When you know your place and your position as the head of all principalities and powers inside Christ Jesus that you are complete, it is impossible. It is impossible to be tormented and to be gagged by demons. It is impossible. Call upon the name and you will see the enemy totally on the floor. You will see the adversary defeated and shattered. Yokes will break and the powers of the enemy will be shattered in your lives. Hallelujah to the word and life of God. Now following this, I'll give you a few examples before we get to the point of prayer, but I want you to pay very significant attention to this. This is very, very important. Abraham never was a father of many nations until his name was changed from Abraham. Abraham simply means limited. And when the name was changed, that was the first thing God was going to do in his life, to bring him into the realm of blessings. God by himself converted Abraham to Abraham, taking him from limita limitations to unlimitless, to limitless life, unlimited blessings. He was at the time without a child. But as God converted his name from Abraham to Abraham, and then the promise got fulfilled when his name became Abraham. I want you to know that there is something about names that directs human lives. We saw Jabesh in the scriptures who was named after the circumstances of his birth. And the mother was sorrowful and therefore they called his name Jabesh. And he lived in sorrow. His life was full of pain. There was nothing meaningful about him until he went to God and cried to God that God would bless him. And God heard his prayer. His prayers pleased, pleased God. And God turned things around for him. And he became a blessed man to the point whereby a, an entire city was named after him. He became prosperous. Sorrow was taken out. And Jesus was glorified. Hallelujah. And we looked at the man by the name Jacob. Jacob was a man who was a supplanter. He was called a supplanter. He was a supplanter. In today's world, he was a swindler. He was a scammer. But he needed an encounter with God. And when he had an encounter with angels, wrestled with an angel overnight, he was delivered. His name was changed from being Jacob into becoming the Prince of God. And through him, the 12 tribes of Israel emerged. And Jesus, the Son of God, emerged. That name had to be converted before he became useful in God's agenda. We look at a man by the name Nebal. Nebal in the scripture. The man, the name simply means fool, a folly. He was a fool and he lived foolishly all his life. 
and he died foolishly. There is something about the name you bear. It is a summary of your destiny. Whether you like it or you don't, whatever your name means, your destiny will begin to go in the same direction of your name. Whatever people call you, you need to begin to pay attention to the names that you bear. And some of our parents, they gave us these names in ignorance. And they gave us names because of the circumstances they found themselves in. Understand that that can be changed and reversed. When you get born again, you get baptized into the name of Jesus. You are no longer under the authority and the power of your parents, of the, of the, of the bloodline. You come automatically get transferred under the bloodline of Jesus. So the authority and the power in the name of Jesus begins to come to force in your life. We saw John and James. The scripture calls them Bonages, the sons of thunder. And every time you always see these guys exhibiting fire, flame. A time there was Jesus sent the disciples to a particular city and asked them to go preach. And they, they, they were rejected in a particular town. They came back to give the report to Jesus. And Jesus said, okay, just shake up the dust of your feet and let it be. Let their blood be on their own. But one of them, these sons of Bonaji, said, no, 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 let's command fire to roast them. Of course, they are behaving just according to the names they bear. The Bonajis, the sons of thunder. The sons of thunder. Your behaviors today, your lifestyle today, the manifestations in your life today, can they not be traceable to the kind of name you bear? Perhaps it has something to do with what is happening in your life currently. When you look at that scripture that my baby read in Acts chapter 3, when we walk to chapter 4, you begin to see that after they took Peter and John and they whooped them, they tortured them and they told them never to preach in the name of Jesus. Why is it about the name Jesus? There are other preachers at the time and there are other people who are busy propagating gospels at the time. Actually, the preaching of resurrection from the dead was not new to them. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, they do know something about resurrection. They do have their limit and their disagreements and they time their words. Peter and John preached about resurrection in the name of Jesus and they got offended. So the problem is not about resurrection of the dead. The problem is about the name and the power by which they did the miracle. The name and the power that produced the miracle. So demons are not particularly against you for just being against you. But they are against you specifically because of the name you came under. The name of Jesus. You are likely to find a lot of resistance because of your stand with God right now. And I want you to know that it's just harassment without legality. You are in power with God. You have been raised and made to sit in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Far above principalities, above powers, above rule, above dominion. Your position is higher than theirs. The only reason why the righteous and God's children suffer most times is because of ignorance. But today, by the reason of the word of God and the revelation of truth, you are breaking forth from that molestation, manipulation, and torment from the kingdom of darkness. The name you bear is Jesus the Christ. The authority and the power in the name of Jesus is too sophisticated for demons to handle. Understand, positionally you are high above obscurity. And you must begin to answer. You must begin to call the name of Jesus with doggedity, with faith, with a lot of courage, with a lot of audacity, 
with confidence. When you call Jesus, the demons tremble. Is the power, authentic power over all the prince of darkness. He said, these guys are unlearned. When they consider Peter and John, they did not go to school. They are not Pharisees like ourselves. They are not Sadducees like ourselves. But this boldness in their face, this authority they demonstrated, definitely these people have been with Jesus. Ooh, hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful for people to realize that we have been with Jesus because of the results they are seeing in our lives? In this period and season of fasting and prayer, I want you to do it so sincerely and so passionately such that even your neighbors will know you have been with Jesus. Let it be so noticeable. Let it be so clear. Let there be more than enough evidence that you are being in the presence of Jesus. You couldn't have been waiting on God that day six and you cannot affect anything. Demons are not already screaming. The forces of darkness are not already subdued. No, 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 no. That's an abuse to the name that you bear. Understand this. You are a torment. You are a torture to darkness everywhere you manifest. The grace and the glory of God is upon your lives. You have something that Peter and John had. And they demonstrated what they had. They said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have. Do you have the name of Jesus? Do you have the name of Jesus? That's the final authority. That's the name above every other name. That's the name at whose name every name bows. That's the name of authoritative name. The power of creation is in that name. The power of deliverance is in that name. The power of healing is in that name. There is no other name given under heaven by which we shall be saved. There is no salvation in any other. The name of Jesus is the authentic name by which we are saved and redeemed. Understand this, that Jesus will answer for you if you call him by faith. Hallelujah. In Mark chapter 16, I say to you, you have the name of Jesus. And that's all you need. You do not need anointing oil. You do not need holy water. You do not need anything. You do not need any river to go and bath. You do not need anything, any, any charm, anything to be tied around you. You do not need to carry anything around. The name of Jesus has all the power and the authority of God together in one box. As you mention the name of Jesus, you put the entire kingdom of God alert. The entire angels in the heavenlies, they rise up on your support. It triggers the supernatural when you mention the name. Hallelujah. Looking at the book of Mark chapter 16, verses 17 to 18. And Jesus spoke. He said, this sign shall follow them that believe in my name. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall lay hands on the sick, they shall speak in new tongues, they shall heal the sick, even if they hit deadly things, it will not harm them. In my name, in my name, in Matthew chapter 10 verse 1, and the Bible says that Jesus called his disciples to himself, and he gave them power and authority over all unclean spirit to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and disease. Hallelujah. I have thought and I have really meditated on that scripture. And I found out the answer was in Mark chapter 16, verse 17. Because I like to see how Jesus gave them power and authority over unclean spirit. And at, at, at certain times I thought he gave them anointing oil. But certainly he did not give them holy water. He did not give them any, any, any mantle. He didn't give them any mantle. But what he gave to them was his name. Just as he said in Mark chapter 16 verse 17, he gave them his name. That was the power needed. That's all you need. He gave them his name and he told them, preach in my name and tell that the kingdom of God is at hand. And everywhere you go, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out unclean spirit. He told them, he gave them his name. He gave them his authority and the capability, ability, which is the power in his name. And that's all that you need as a believer. 
That's all that you need. It's more than enough for you. He gave them his name. Jesus, which is equal to power over all unclean spirit. The signs and the wonders that you tread upon snake and upon serpent and upon scorpion and upon all the abilities of the enemy and nothing by enemies will harm you. That's the name. That is the sophisticated name that you mean. And that's the name that delivers day and night, morning and evening. That is the authoritative name, the name that is a high and above every other name. That is the name that you have as a believer. Like Peter and John, such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus the Christ, rise up and work. I address you, brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus. There are dynamics in the realm of the Spirit. There are levels in the realm of the Spirit. From the beginning of the fast to this point, the levels have changed. Understand the graces with you. The mercy of God you have obtained. The, 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 the favor of God is upon you right now. The peace of God is upon you. And the next necessary thing to see is the power of God. And you need to begin to rise in the realm of the Spirit and begin to do damage to the kingdom of darkness. And stop this fear. It's not of God. It's of the devil. Stop this panic. You cannot be manipulated. You cannot be subdued. The power and the authority under which you have come is too sophisticated. Satan cannot handle that. I know many people use the name of Jesus and they use carelessly. Hey, Jesus. And then they say slanderous things and then when they are joking, they mention Jesus. It should not be your case. Understand that you do not use the name of the Lord your God in vain. You must never call Jesus when you are not intending to. It must not come in conversation as though it's a slam. You call the name Jesus when you mean it. A minute when you call it. And when you call the name of Jesus, let the every fiber in your being solidly stand by that same, same name. Call it in faith. Call it with authority. Call the name of Jesus with conviction. Call the name of Jesus as though that's the only authority existing. Call the name of Jesus as though that's the last option. The very first option too. You will see the power of God like never before. I have been privileged to see so many experiences in the warfare ground. Because of the kind of calling that is upon my life, I have had situations in the past, past when I had encounter in the realm of the spirit, I see almost a complete field filled with uh, demons, very miserable demons, filled. I can't even begin to suggest what the numbers are. Filled completely as far as my eyes can see with demons. And the only thing they were coming for is to come and arrest me. They were coming completely for me. And all I saw was God elevated me and placed me on the rock. This I've seen not one time, not twice. Placed me on the rock. And all I could see is how angry these miniatures were. And how ferocious, how determined they were. And as they were coming close, surrounding me, as they were coming close, I've seen God demonstrated his power. All I could call in that encounter was Jesus. I called, it was thunderous. I saw myself in the spirit calling the name Jesus. And I saw everything that looked like the sea of demons. All of them were floored on the ground. They were electrocuted. I, I, walked, I was looking around to see there was none standing. All on the floor. It, when I got out from that encounter, I knew something serious entered my life. I knew I was in the right place, the safe place. From that day onwards, that was decades ago, from that day onwards, I have this very strange audacity when I address issues. Strange audacity to confront situations. You dare not tell me you are a witch and all this and all that and then you come around to threaten another. I have so much confidence in the name of Jesus 
but I needed some of this encounter to really be able to project me and give me that clarity. And I tell you today, there is so much in the name of Jesus that you are yet to know. I want to give a pause today and I want to lead you into a very brief prayer. But I want you to go on as you go in your private times to pray. And pray this way, pray differently as from this day forward. Pray with understanding. And when you mention Jesus, be very intentional. Very, very intentional. And I want you to begin to watch out what will begin to occur in your revelations, in your lives. The level will change automatically. The power and the authority in the name of Jesus getting into some dynamite, uh, dynamic uh, realms of warfare. You need this understanding and you need this insight. You need this conviction and you need this boldness to really use and utilize the name of Jesus. All that was a problem to the Jews, to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all that, all that was important to them was that they must preach, but they should not preach or talk to anybody in the name of Jesus. Why must Jesus be the tormenting factor? They have no problem with the disciples preaching. As long as they do not preach in the name of Jesus or talk to anyone in the name of Jesus. But I cannot begin to think of negotiating, speaking about the things I've heard and I've seen. So they say, we cannot negotiate the truth. We will preach. Because this name Jesus is the same name that the, the stone that the builders rejected. And the same has become the cape stone, the corner stone. And it's the doing of the Lord and it is marvelous in our own eyes. How amazing is the name of Jesus. Let's pray this prayer quickly before I end the broadcast. Say with me, by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. I renounce every evil and negative covenant and agreement over my life through the name I was given. I say it again, by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ, I renounce every evil and negative covenant and agreement over my life through my given names. I cancel every curse, every spell invoked or released every time my name and my surname is mentioned. I say again, I cancel every curse, I cancel every spell invoked and released every time my names and my surname is mentioned in the name of Jesus. I detach myself from the curse of my bloodline in Jesus' name. I detach myself from the curse and the spell of my bloodline in Jesus' mighty name. Every altar upon which my name, Apostle Raji Emmanuel, every altar upon which my names, Apostle Raji Oluwasa Emmanuel, I invoked with a demonic and evil intent. I command you to catch fire right now in the name of Jesus. I hereby disconnect from my bloodline. I hereby connect permanently to the power and the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. From this minute onwards, I belong to Jesus Christ. From this moment onwards, I belong to Jesus Christ. Every blood covenant in force over my life and my destiny that allows God's purpose for my life to be manipulated, to be altered, be destroyed now 
In Jesus' name. Every blood covenant in force over my life and destiny that allows God's purpose for my life to be manipulated, to be altered, be destroyed right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. That's it, my friend. Power, the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. We are just starting. It's a new level. And just like I said to you, we are getting into dimensions in the world of the spirit. Higher than every other name, higher than every authority known from heaven itself, the name of Jesus is supreme. God the Father said, whatever you will ask in my name, Jesus was speaking to us in the book of John. He said, if you ask anything in my name, my Father will do it. That name is higher than every other name. Remember this. And everyone seems to know the name of Jesus, but very few people know the power within the name. Very few people know the authority that the name carries. I challenge you today to begin to exercise yourself willingly and intentionally in the name of Jesus. It is stronger than you think. The name is so efficacious. The name is so powerful. The name is the authority that every demon bows to. Your grammar means nothing to demons. Your language, your, your, your accent means nothing to demons. But your authority, the authority under which you operate matters to them. And the highest authority is in the name of Jesus. We are coming again tomorrow to get a little deeper in this. Getting into some dimensions and the spirit power. And your eyes will see great and deep things that you do not know. I want you to carry on. Please don't be weak. Get stronger every day because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We are mounting up right now with wings as eagles. You are not in the same level you were when we started. Every day, the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter to a perfect day. You are getting stronger. You are getting higher in the realm of authority and in the realm of power. And I want to challenge you to please take it to the next level tonight. Do not just take this and then play with it. I want you to really, really work fair with this. Take it to the very another dimension. Your prayer should enter another gear tonight. God bless you. I am waiting for your testimony. Please send me testimonies. We want to know what God is doing in your lives. And I want to appeal to you, please publish the word. Join us to publish the word. You're doing the work of the kingdom. Publish the word. Reach out to people everywhere. Send to as many as possible. Whoever doesn't want it, well, let it be their choice. But please publish the word. Publish the word. Go to our YouTube channel, click the links, and then subscribe, like, and share, please. This is important. We want to reach the entire earth with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you've got to play your own part. God bless you. Amen and amen.